Okay, so last thing we're going to talk about before talking about inhibitors, we're going to talk about a very complicated example of Michaelis Menten kinetics. So previously, we just had E plus S gives you your complex, and then the complex has one step to break up into the enzyme plus the product. Okay, this was the simplest case. In lecture, the more complicated case was where you form the enzyme substrate complex, and you actually have two steps before the uh, uh, you have two steps before the catalyzed reaction is complete. You have K3 and you have K2, and then these things correspond to the different products that could get released. You know, like this would be like for example, like a lyase enzyme that cuts a substrate into two products. Okay. In lecture, there was a lot of like derivation and it's just really, really complicated that I'm just not gonna go over right now. I just don't think it's very relevant and you know, you can just write it on your cheat sheet. I'm more, more so I'm just gonna do a little bit of comparison about what's going on. So before we had KM defined as negative K1 plus K2 divided by K1. Remember, this measured our affinity, how likely the enzyme was to bind the substrate, and then from there, catalyze it. We had Vmax was equal to K2 times enzyme total, because we assumed that this, was, this K2 was the rate determining step. And then the basic form of the michaelis menten equation was V equals Vmax times concentration divided by Km plus your concentration of S, okay? Now, things get a lot more complex when you have to deal with two possible reactions because when you deal with two possible reactions coming from the um, enzyme substrate complex, it just gets really, really complicated. So what happens now is your Km apparent is going to be Ks times K3. Notice the difference between capital and lowercase k's. Lowercase k's are rate constants, whereas uppercase are equilibrium constants. And of course, this Ks is still our dissociation constant. Okay, so we have a Km apparent, and then your Vmax, or sorry, your michaelis menten is going to be V equals Vmax. And then instead of Km, we're going to use Km apparent plus the concentration of S. And then in my opinion, the most important thing to take a look at is that now when it comes to your Vmax, you just don't use K2 by default. Instead, Vmax is going to be equal to uh, K2 times K3 divided by K2 plus K3 times your total concentration of enzyme. Now, the assumption that we're gonna make is that either K2 or K3 is really, really big, and the one that's small is gonna be the really, is gonna be the rate determining step. So, for example, let's say that K2 was much, much smaller than K3. Okay, if K2 is much, much smaller than K3, then that means the reaction governed by K2 is your rate determining step, and if K2 is much, much smaller than K3, what ends up happening is you end up with K2 over K3 divided by K3, and then these things cancel out, and you're pretty much just left with K2. And then your resulting Vmax is going to be K2 times enzyme total. Okay, you can use the exact same logic um, if like, let's say K3, were much, much smaller than K2. If K3 were much, much smaller than K2, what ends up happening is the only term that matters is K3, using the same logic as above. And then your Vmax is going to be based upon K3 times enzyme total. So really, when you have two complex react, when you have a complex michaelis menten thing like this, first thing is the equations become much, much more complicated and yeah, they're just listed up here in the top right corner. The second thing is the overall speed, the overall rate of the reaction is going to be determined by whichever reaction is slower. Is it K2 or is it K3? And that's why our Vmax is going to be based upon K2 if K2 is much, much smaller. And it's going to be based upon K3 if K3 is, if that reaction governed by K3 is much, much smaller. 
Now, the takeaway message from this is when we have a release of product that's going to be determined by multiple, multiple steps, you use the slowest step, okay? So use your slowest step all the time. And since we don't really know what the slowest step is, oftentimes they'll mention that K has this term K cat, okay? And K cat just refers to the reaction or the rate constant for the slowest um, release of product. And that determines how much you can turn over that substrate into product, okay? It's often called the turnover number. It's, it's essentially just a measure of how fast can your enzyme turn the substrate into products, okay? In the previous examples, we always assumed K2 was Kcat, but with this complex example, it could be K2 or K3. It's just whatever the slowest step is, okay? So K2, K3, use whichever one's the slowest, and that's your Kcat.